you very much. I absolutely agree that absolute power is never healthy. But Minister, I think uh, on this you've done well in standing to your what you believe in in terms of quarantine, and I agree with you. My difficulty is it should have been brought in last year, and when it was brought in this year, it was brought in under pressure and in a way that was destined not to succeed in the sense of no oversight, outsourced, no human rights impact assessment, and today, no details. Now, I welcome your speech, and you told us how many people have gone through it, and you've told us 4,400 people, and 173 cases were detected, and you give us a breakdown of 163 residents, nine staff, um, nine staff, which is significant as to how the staff contacted it, and that would raise questions on one accompanied minor. And uh, significantly also 59 variants of concern have been detected, and for that alone the quarantine was worth it. My difficulty is the manner in which it's been conducted, Minister. I have the greatest difficulty with that. Article 9 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights holds that detention should never be arbitrary. So there's an extra extra onus on the government to, because that's what we're doing is detaining people. The uh, European Court of Human Rights judgments, were, and I could quote many, but just one, where deprivation of liberty is at stake, the interests of justice in principle call for legal representation. Now significantly you've given us no figures today on the numbers of, of, of appeals, how they were handled, whether there's consistency in those appeals, whether the humanitarian grounds exception are being applied consistently. Absolutely no information on any of those. I was aghast to hear Deputy O'Callaghan talk about looking back that we handled it very well. Now whatever about in the beginning when there was a certain level of ignorance and uncertainty, there was none by the summertime when we utterly failed to plan for the third wave. And if we look at the figures, they're absolutely shocking. The figures for January to May of this year, as you're more than familiar with, 2,704 deaths and most of those between January and March. That was in comparison with all of last year where we had 2,237 deaths in total. So most of the deaths in the first few months of this year and we utterly failed to pave, to plan for that or to take action and we bring in quarantine under pressure and in a manner that's not a not compliance with our legal obligations, both nationally and internationally. And I, I don't know why we have to go through freedom of information and dull questions to find out if there really is a onus on you to to inspire confidence so that we can work with you. And I'm saying that as someone that agrees with mandatory quarantine oh, as a last resort, but we should have done it in the beginning last year and we would be in a very different space. I have the greatest trouble with TDs revising or changing history. We utterly fail to protect our vulnerable people in nursing homes, in, de in, deten in pre direct provision, and in meat plants. We utterly failed, and, and I'm, I'm sure I might have failed as well had I been in government, but I don't think I would have failed to learn from our mistakes, and to be still making mistakes this time is simply unacceptable. I'm out of time, Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Connolly.